Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will be discussing about the last problem of today's weekly contest, longest cycle in a graph. The problem states that you are given a graph of n nodes from 0 to n minus 1 and each node has at most one outgoing edge. Now the, we have to find out the length of the longest cycle in the graph. So problem is simple, you have given a graph, you just need to find out the longest cycle. So in this particular example, this graph has only one cycle and the length of that cycle is 3. So that's where the output is 3. This graph doesn't have any cycle, so the output is minus 1. So that's the problem. Now, first of all, let's try to think what, like, what we have to just, like, the problem is simple, right? We have to find out the longest cycle in the graph. So finding longest cycle in a directed or undirected graph is a MP complete problem. Basically, you can't find a polynomial time solution to that problem. And this is one of the example graph wherein you can see the usual DFS based algorithm of finding longest cycle would not work. So we will look at this example again at the end of the video when we have discussed what exactly, how exactly we solve this problem so that you can understand the difference and uh, like you can also understand why this is MP complete. So first, uh, now we understand that problem is MP complete, right? So we, we definitely need to make an observation such that we can solve it in polynomial time. So this statement is the key. Each node has at most one outgoing edge. So why this is the key? So let's try to think of it in this way. Each node can have only one edge outgoing from it, right? So if it has only one edge outgoing from it, it can, like if you start DFS, sorry, if you start DFS from that node, you will, like you will only traverse in a single path, right? So for example, let's say you start DFS from three. So you will go to two and because two also has only one outgoing edge, right? So from 2, you definitely end at 4. And from 4, again, there is only one outgoing edge. So you will end at 3 or let's say somewhere else. And from there, you can definitely reach only a single point and so on and so forth. So either you will reach back 3 or any of these visitor nodes or you will not reach at all and you will hit a dead end. So that's the two possible com uh, solution, uh, two, two possible cases here, right? Because there is no branches, right? Because let's say from two, you can traverse in a single path. There is no other alternative. You can't actually, let's say you come to two and you can't actually go to some other path because there is only one outgoing edge. So this statement actually states that you will, whenever you try to traverse in a path, you will always end up in a single path. So what does this actually means? This actually means that any node can be a part of at most one cycle. Again, how this is true? Because you know that from this node, you can only traverse in a single direction, like in a single flow. You are sure that you will not be forming any other cycle other than this with this particular node. Why? Because to form a cycle, let's say this node forms a cycle. So it means that there are uh, outgoing edges from this and there are some incoming edges back to this, like after visiting some nodes, it, it backs to this. So if there is a cycle, there is already a cycle, if this node already a part of a cycle, then to become a part of another cycle, this node has to have another outgoing edge to some other node, which in turn will visit somewhere and then end up here. Right. So this is not possible because there is only one outgoing edge. So hope you understand what exactly we are trying to say here with this observation, like any node can be a part of only one cycle. This problem is very straightforward. Now you can just, you know that this node is a part of one cycle or is not a part of cycle at all. So what you can do, you can simply do a DFS from this particular node, visit all the nodes and you will either end up again at three. In that case, you know that there is a cycle and you will get the length of the cycle. 
we will look at how or you will not end at 3 you will hit a dead end let's say from 4 this is not there and there is a node to 5 so you will either hit a dead end like this is a path simple path there is no cycle or you will end up at 4 or any other visited node so that's what the problem is now you just need to start a dfs from a node visit everything because there is only one single path you will either end up in a cycle or you will not end up in any cycle so just to clarify it a bit further let's say you start from node 0 right so if you start from node 0 what you will do you will just do a dfs there is only one outgoing path so you go to zero you go to 3 from 0 and from 3 you will go to 2 then 4 and then 3 so basically you will never return 0 here but you found like a path already like there is a from you you go to 3 like 3 is active so you go to 2 4 and from 4 you again get back to 3 which is a currently active path so there is a cycle so that's how you will just uh, find the cycle and because of this statement it is true that there is it is part of at most one cycle and because it is a part of at most one cycle this is not not an np complete problem anymore so let's just look at a simple example that will make it more clear so we said that we will do a basic dfs so let's say we start from 3 okay and you, if you start from 3 you will do a dfs you go to you mark 3 as visited let's say visited is marked as v okay and uh, you go to 2, mark it as visited, you go to 4, mark it as visited, and then you again get back to 3. So basically you are getting back to a visited node, which means that there is a cycle, right? So you will just, uh, you can just say that there is a cycle, you found a cycle, but this is not actually true, like you can't actually mark this a true or false, because let's say you found a cycle, you do, a, do you complete the BF, uh, DFS from 3 like you already completed the dfs from 3 now you start the dfs from 0 because 0 is not yet visited so you mark it visited and then you go to 3 and you will see that okay this is also visited so what is the theory theory is if you visit a already visited node then it is a cycle but you can see this is not forming a cycle so in a way why this is not forming a cycle because this visited was marked in the previous iteration right not in the current iteration so that's where this visited is not actually a visited anymore but if you unmark it let's say you unmark it then you have to again visit this entire piece and that will not be a like that will bring the bring the complexity to order n square because you are visiting every node from every starting from every node so that is not a good algorithm uh, so what you can do you can do you can put two kind of visited let's say v1 and v2 so let's just look at it again so you start from 3 right so 3 is the part of your current visited set so you will mark it as v1 that it is currently active you are visiting this path then you go to 2 you mark it v1 you go to 4 you mark it v1 and from here you again get back to 3 which is marked as v1 now because it is marked as v1 it means this is a part of your active path like you are you this path like this 3 2 2 2 4 this path is active so if you get back to any of these you will form a cycle so that's where you encountered a v1 so you will say that okay i, I found a cycle and now if you start from zero let's say you mark it like okay one more thing after you uh, do your entire work while returning back like in, in dfs basically you return back to the same node right it is a kind of stack so while returning back you will mark uh, 4 as v2 and then you will return to v2 you will mark 2 as v2 and then you will return to 3 you will mark 3 as v2 now why you are mark marking it as v2 v2 means it is already explored you it is already explored but not in the current path so now if you start with v, uh, 0 you will mark it as v1 you go to 3 which is visited but mark marked as v2 it means 3 was explored sometime back 
and it is completely explored now because it is completely explored there is no more path like there is no more cycle from 3 so if any node comes to 3 right that node will not form a cycle again uh, because any of these nodes like any of the node that we have visited doesn't only have one outgoing edge if it has one more outgoing edge let's say like this then it will be an issue we will look at that but because we have already visited all these things we will not we will not want to visit this but we will also let this node know that okay you don't need to visit this you you can't find a cycle here so that's where v2 will help you with v2 you will not further explore and you will also let zero know that okay um, there is no path like there is no cycle starting from if you visit 3 so that's what that's how you find the algorithm like you find the cycle in an undirected graph or in a directed graph now here we need to find the length of the cycle so that is pretty simple you can just maintain a height or depth of every node so let's say you start from 3 you mark or let's say this this time you start at 0 you marked as v1 okay now you go to 3 you marked as v1 you go to 2 mark it as v1 you go to 4 mark it as v1 okay one more thing with this marking let's also maintain the depth so you start from 0 so let's say the depth is this is 1 then you go to 2 depth is 2 you go to 2 depth is 3 you go to 4 depth is 4 and then you again get back to a v1 cell right so this node was currently visited v1 means this node is currently visited in the path like you are in the dfs of that that particular path so every node here is active so anything getting back to that visited node will form a cycle so this you you encountered a visited node so now what is the uh like what is the length of this cycle length of this cycle is simply the uh, difference of depth so let's say uh what would have been the depth of this new node this would have been 5 right if let's say this is a new node the depth would be 5 because this is 4 so next one should be 5 now you can just subtract 5 from 2 and you will get the cycle length right because what you are saying that you have this node like it's very similar to this so let's say you have some visited node and you get back to here so you visited it in the second iteration and this is let's say the fourth iteration so this is the fifth one now this length is simply 3 because you can think of it as prefix sum 2 3 4 and then you uh, you will have been put a 5 but you want to find the length of this 3 you can just subtract these two things so that's how you find the length a uh, length of this cycle you can just maintain a depth along with your uh, visited nodes or height and you will find out what is the length of a cycle and we have already discussed if a node is a part of one cycle it can't be a part of another cycle so this depth will be used at max once so that's how uh, it will solve any kind of collision issues we will look at uh, the actual issue again but this is how you find the you, you will solve this pro this problem so just to reiterate what we have done we have first established the fact that a node can be a part of at max one cycle and because of which you are free to do a dfs and you are sure that you will end up only in one cycle now because this is true you are trying to maintain the depth to find out the length of the cycle so you started from uh, any node and do a dfs and uh, the next node you visit you just increment the depth so from 0 the depth is 1 for to you visit 3 your depth depth is 2 then th depth is 3 4 and then if you visit uh, already visited v1 type of node you can just uh, subtract this to depth and you will get the length of this cycle so hope this solution makes sense now let's just quickly look at the code and then we will come back and see how this all things will not apply in case of an actual graph so the code is uh, very similar to what we have just discussed so we have we are building the graph here okay and uh, then we are doing a dfs for each node 
now what is dfs we look at and finally like we are just in like incrementing our result inside this dfs itself and finally we are returning the result so what is this dfs function the dfs function is straightforward it is taking in the depth the depth of the current node which is to be visited a visited array as a reference so that we can know which all nodes are already visited and what are their kinds v1 or v2 and the result longest cycle so if visited array is an active node so what is an active node we have just discussed right so if you are visiting it in the current cycle then it is an active node so if visited array is an act if, if current node is an active node it means you are again visiting an active node so you found a cycle so what is the length of the cycle length of the cycle is depth minus the height of that node so basically you have stored height somewhere else so in this case we have stored this to somewhere right now this is where this is what height array is now you just subtract these two you will get the length of the cycle and you just do a max of uh, this with our answer now if this visited is already explored node it means you can't do anything else you just have to return so this uh, explored node is kind of v2 node now because this is neither explored nor active it means it is a very new node that we are just seeing so we mark it as active because we are currently visiting it so it will be a part of current iterations and we we also uh, put its height like height is the current depth and then we visit its children so this is like this for loop was not required the, it can have at only one children at max one children so we can just check that but just for simplicity i put this for loop now after that you can mark this node as explored because we have just discussed after this entire thing is done right you have to mark everything as v2 because why v2 let's just look at it again so when you start visiting from 1 you will encounter 3 you don't want to visit everything again right and you are also sure that you, this, this will not form any cycle because of because this node can be a part of one cycle and that part is already covered somewhere previously so this that's where you you will just see that okay it is v2 so i will not explore it anymore let me uh, traverse back so that's where you are marking it as explored node and that's where this condition will hit for any new kind of node which is trying to access an explored node now once this is like this is what the solution is if you have any doubts please post them in the comment section below now let's just quickly look at the like why this same algorithm can't be applied in a regular graph so let's say like a regular graph can have more than one outgoing edges so see this node this node has more than uh, one outgoing edges right similarly see this node this node has also more than uh, more than one outgoing edges right so now let's see why the same algorithm can't be applied here so let's say you start from here you mark it as v1 you go here mark it as v1 you go here mark it as v1 so you found a cycle right now because you found a cycle you will just increment your answer let's say you incremented your longest cycle by 3 now there is no more node to visit from this node so you will recurse back and mark it as v2 v2 and before marking the v2 you will visit another node so this is again v1 this is v1 and let's say this is also v1 now you will try this particular piece but it will say that okay it is v2 so you will not try it any further but you can see this piece like if you start from here go here go here this is actually forming a cycle so this kind of cycle you will not get at all right without like marking it like without again uh, marking it as unvisited so that's the issue with uh, this problem and that's why it is np complete and because it is np complete you can't actually have a polynomial time solution for this particular problem so hope this entire piece makes sense if you have any doubts please post them in the comment section below i will be able to answer and i will see you in the next video thank you